Hey guys, what's going on? So I've got a tutorial all about how to color grade your footage from the DJI Spark to make it look cinematic. Before we get started, go down into the description. I put a couple sample clips that you can download, you can grade along with me. A couple of shots that I'm using in this tutorial are there for you to play with. These are just for educational purposes if you wanna follow along with this video. Okay, so the basics of color grading start with actually shooting. So there are some techniques that you need to be aware of when you're shooting with the DJI Spark to be able to get the best footage possible to color grade in post. So the first thing you need to keep in mind is you gotta lock your exposure. If you're using auto exposure with the Spark, it's gonna be fluctuating all over the place and the footage isn't easy to grade. I mean, anytime you're grading footage, you wanna grade footage that has a locked exposure from beginning to end the same shot. That's the key thing here, lock your exposure. The second part is think about time of day and when you're shooting and where the direction of the sun is coming from. If the sun is beating down directly on your subject matter, it's gonna be a very different shot than if you're shooting at like golden hour and you have the sun low in the horizon off to the side. The big part about getting cinematic shots is a shooting cinematic. So this video is not about the shooting techniques, it's more about the color grading, but something to keep in mind, just be aware of your lighting. If you have the sun hitting an object directly or it's too dark, you're not gonna be set up properly to start color grading to get the best results. And with that comes your overexposure and underexposure. Because the DJI Spark basically has one color profile, you basically get this contrasted image that has a burnt in look. So when you're shooting, you gotta keep your histogram on the screen and make sure that your whites are not overexposing and your blacks are not falling too far in the bottom. Basically, you don't wanna clip your tops and you don't wanna clip your bottoms. You wanna to try to keep your image as close to the center as possible because as soon as you overexpose and as soon as you underexpose, you're gonna get an image that's not ready to color grade. You need an image that has information throughout the entire range of the spectrum. So when you're shooting, just keep that in mind. Look at your histogram. If it's overexposing, then bring your exposure down because you don't want overexposed images. As as soon as your sky goes to white, you're done. You can't color grade that back. And the same thing, if your blacks go to black, you can't bring them up. It's just completely black. That is the biggest thing I would say when it comes to the exposure. All right, so let's get into Final Cut and start color grading these clips. All right, so now we're in Final Cut and we're basically gonna go through a few different ways that you can color grade your footage. The first thing you wanna do when you get into color grading is basically setting up Final Cut so that it is the most efficient for color grading and the most effective. This is the basic default layout and you're gonna to wanna to change this to optimize your space for color grading. But basically what I'm gonna do is go up to Window, go to my workspaces and go to Color and Effects. So what that's gonna do is bring up the basic color layout. There's a lot going on in this timeline and for coloring you don't need that. Now I'm going to readjust this to make it better suited for what I want, which is color grading. Bring the timeline down and then make the viewer big. And you got everything you need for color grading here. So what you can do is go to your window, go to workspaces, save workspace as, and I would save this so that every time you get into color grading, you can just pop up and go. So let's show you guys the scopes. Luma is basically all your exposure from zero, which is black, up to 100, which is white. When I bring my exposure up, you'll see that everything in the graph is going to the 100 mark, and 100 is where it starts clipping. When you bring it down, everything's gonna go to black. You can see that it clips on black just under zero. So you have a little range under zero, but zero to 100 is basically the exposure you wanna stay within. You're gonna use this to basically judge how to set your exposure. So vector scope is basically an overlay of color and saturation on a disc. Basically, you'll see when I take the saturation and boost it, you're getting more information going towards the different colors. And you basically use this to help judge your color temperature and colors within your image. So for example, let's say we're a little blue with it, you'll see how the colors start to drift towards blue. White is in the dead center, and then all your colors stretch out from there. And then the last one I'm gonna show you, these are the three I primarily use. The third one is the RGB Parade, and this is just another way to look at color and saturation. So you can see as I push the color around how the three red, green, blue dance around. And what you'll wanna do when you're color grading for white balance is bring that back down and try to even them out. In general, you can use these as your guidance for your overall whites, which are at the top. Okay, so when we're color grading, I'm going to pull up these three and I'm gonna put them in my window layout. And you do that by just clicking the top right hand corner, 
and that's where our image is starting with the spark footage. So you can use the color grading tools within Final Cut and basically that gives you color, saturation, exposure, and the only tools that you have available is whites, mids, and blacks, and then your overall global change so that it affects all whites, mids, and blacks. For just doing a basic grade and making this more cinematic, I'm gonna start with my exposure. I'm gonna bring my blacks up a tad, my mids down. I may bring the global down, let's say 20%. For saturation, I may bring the global down, let's say 20%. And now that already is starting to get more of a cinematic look to it. So it's less saturation and the exposure is a little bit more flat. You're gonna dial it in for your image because each shot is different, but that gives you something that is more cinematic than your initial, which is very contrasted, lots of saturation. So now, instead of using those, let's bring in Color Finale. This is the window for Color Finale, and here's what you can do that's much different than Final Cut. So now let's just do a color grade using Color Finale. So I'm gonna start with my curves because this image is already pretty burnt in, like I said. To create a cinematic look with curves, the key is bringing your blacks up and then creating an S curve on your master curve. So you bring these down and you bring these up to your liking. And you can see already how that's created more of a cinematic look to the image. And then from there, what I'll do is I might bring like the mids down a tad with the color wheels, either boost, maybe take out some saturation. Yeah, I'll take out some saturation. And then last is the vectors. So this is where you go into your secondary. So you might push some colors around. And what I'm doing is dialing in each color. Hue changes the actual color of the image. Saturation is obviously the saturation. And luminosity is the brightness. So let's say we take our blues and take them all the way up. You can see how all the blues in the image go up or you go all the way down. So with blues, I'm gonna bring that down. And this is where you can start really taking your colors and shifting them around to create different looks to your image. So now we got a very teal and red image here. And it's something different to the shot for sure, rather than just doing some basic grading. I like that a lot more. So that's how you do a color grade using Color Finale. There's obviously more ways that you can use these tools, but like I said, you go in, you play with your curves and your color wheels. From there, you go into your secondary colors and that's really, really where you start tweaking your look. And so again, with the curves, bring up your blacks and you create more of this S shape to get the more cinematic look. So now I'm gonna show you how to do a basic grade with just using a LUT. So I'm gonna use a Send LUTs and these are great, I love using these. You supply it and then it changes the look immediately. Sometimes you'll dial it in from 100 down to zero, say like 75% and there you go. You have a look already built into your image, something that you might just slap on a LUT and go. Now something cool about Color Finale and why I like using this is let's go to your LUT gallery here. So the Ascend LUTs comes with a bunch of LUTs. We turn on our LUT gallery, you can see all the different looks. So a lot of times, instead of going through and color grading each shot, if I'm trying to go faster or I know that I'm looking for a specific look, I'll just turn on the LUT gallery and I like this Vintio look and then I might dial that back. So it's only at like 50%, yeah, let's go 60. And there we go, we have a nice looking image. And then from here, you can add your color wheels and maybe dial back. Maybe you want to bring down the mids a little bit, maybe down the saturation. In a few seconds, you're able to have a nice color graded shot. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful in giving you some ideas and tricks and ways to start color grading your footage to get more of a cinematic look. There is so much to learn in color grading, and this is just the basic level. However, from here, you'll be able to color grade most of your shots and be able to get some really cool looking results. Guys, if you are interested in more advanced color grading and really diving into creating different looks, leave a comment below, let me know your thoughts, if it's something you guys wanna see more videos on. It's a bummer the Spark doesn't have more color profiles, more of a flat profile, because it would make it so much easier to color grade. You could still get cool looking images out of the Spark. It's still fun to fly. 
It's a great drone and I'm glad I have it in my arsenal. Guys, if you have any questions about color grading or about anything about the Spark in general, feel free to reach out. Find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Everything's at Wonderworks. And if you want more videos just like this, guys, leave a comment below. All right, that is it. Go fly, go have some fun, try some color grading. There are links in the description to everything I talked about in this video. And guys, that's it. I will see you on the next one.